That quest is groovy, just like a movie groove. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to be talking about multidimensional scaling, MDS, and principal coordinate analysis, PCOA. First of all, if you don't have principal component analysis, PCA, down cold, check out the StatQuest, PCA main ideas in five minutes. Principal component analysis and multidimensional scaling are both very, very similar. So I want you to be able to understand PCA before we move on with this one. Also, to be clear about what we will cover in this stack quest, there are two types of multidimensional scaling. There's classical or metric multidimensional scaling versus non-metric multidimensional scaling. I'm only going to talk about classical multidimensional scaling in this stack quest. And classical multidimensional scaling is the exact same thing as principal coordinate analysis. Okay, enough preliminary stuff. Let's dive in. Let's say we had some normal cells. Psst, if you're not a biologist, these could be people or cars or cities, etc. Even though they look the same, we suspect that there are differences. These might be one type of cell, or one type of person, or car, or city, etc. These might be another type of cell, and these might be a third type of cell. Unfortunately, we can't observe the differences from the outside. So we sequence the messenger RNA in each cell to identify which genes are active. This tells us what each cell is doing. Alternatively, if they were people, we could measure their height, blood pressure, reading level, etc. Here's the data. Each column shows how much each gene is transcribed in each cell. When we did PCA in the stat quest that explains the main ideas of PCA in five minutes, we converted the correlations, or lack thereof, among the samples into a 2D principal component analysis plot. And we saw that highly correlated samples form clusters. Multidimensional scaling, MDS, and principal coordinate analysis, PCOA, are very similar to PCA, except that instead of converting correlations into a 2D graph, they convert distances among the samples into a 2D graph. So, in order to do MDS or PCOA, we have to calculate the distance between cell 1 and cell 2, and the distance between cell 1 and cell 3, and the distance between cell 1 and cell 4, and the distance between cell 2 and cell 3, all right, you get the idea. We calculate the distance between every pair of cells. Now let's just talk about how to calculate distances. For now, let's imagine we only needed to calculate the distance between cell 1 and cell 2. One very common way to calculate distances between two things is to calculate the Euclidean distance. If we just had two genes, we could draw a line that represented the difference between the values for gene 1, and we could draw a line that represented the difference between the values for gene 2. Then, the Euclidean distance between cell 1 and cell 2 would be the hypotenuse, i.e. the Pythagorean theorem. With more genes, we just add the square of more differences between more genes. This is the difference for gene 1, this is the difference for gene 2, and this is the difference for gene 3, etc., etc., etc. And once we calculated the distance between every pair of cells, MDS and PCOA would reduce them to a two-dimensional graph. The bad news is that if we use the Euclidean distance, the graph would be identical to a PCA graph. In other words, clustering based on minimizing the linear distances is the same as maximizing the linear correlations. The good news is that there are tons of other ways to measure distance. We don't have to use the Euclidean distance, although sometimes people choose to use it anyways. For example, 
Another way to measure distances between cells is to calculate the average of the absolute value of the log fold changes among the genes. Using the data from cells 1 and 2, the log fold change for gene 1 is the log of 3 divided by 0 0.25. And the log fold change for gene 2 is the log of 2.9 divided by 0 0.8. And we just keep going, calculating log fold changes for each gene for cells 1 and 2. For example, the log fold change for gene 8 equals the log of 1 divided by 2.7. Here are the actual log 2 values of the ratios I've just talked about. We've got 3.58, 1.86, dot dot dot, and then negative 1.43. Now we take the absolute value. Lastly, we take the average of all the numbers. That's the average of the absolute value of the log fold change among the genes. Note, we take the absolute value so that the negative fold changes don't cancel out the positive ones. Ultimately, we'll get graphs that look different. A biologist might choose to use log fold change to calculate distance because they are frequently interested in log fold changes among genes. But there are lots of distances to choose from. The Manhattan distance, Hamming distance, Great Circle distance, etc, etc, etc. You can look them up on the web. Selecting the best distance is part of the art of data science. In summary, PCA creates plots based on correlations among samples and MDS and principal coordinate analysis create plots based on distances among samples. The closer samples are to each other, the more tightly they cluster in the final plot. In other words, PCA starts by calculating the correlations among the samples. Then there's some fancy math, specifically eigen decomposition, and out of that we get coordinates for a graph, we get the percent of variation each axis accounts for, and we get loading scores to determine which variables have the largest effect. In contrast, MDS and principal coordinate analysis start by calculating distances among the samples. However, that's the only difference. The fancy math is the exact same, and the output is similar. You get coordinates for a graph, the percent of variation that each axis accounts for, and loading scores to determine which variables have the largest effect. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more of them, please subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future stat quests, well, put them in the comments below. Until next time, quest on!